suppose with the help of a pulley if we suspend two block of mass let m1 and m2 if i assume m2 is heavier than m1 and the pulley pulley and the string the pulley and the string used is light material is light material then find acceleration of the blocks then find acceleration of m1 and m2 this now in this case only if i change one condition in the above case in the above case if pulley is taken of mass m and having frictional having roughness having roughness in its surface then what will be the acceleration of m1 and m2 the same arrangement only i have changed the condition that this time instead of taking it is a light pulley if i take it as a heavy pulley such that its mass will be countable means its weight will be countable and the surface uh, of contact of the pulley and right pulley and the what string that is taken to be a rough surface i have taken the same arrangement same masses then uh, will there be any change in acceleration value or it will be remain same yes of course there will be change in acceleration but can you tell me how that uh, change will be taken place how can we evaluate that change right absolutely so that means but pulley is not participating in motion right pulley is not participating in motion so how that uh, unmoved pulley right will influence the acceleration of m1 and m2 so far as uh, the string is concerned i'm still considering it is a light string only right so one end it is attached to a block m1 other end it is attached to a block of m2 still considering the same condition that m2 is heavier than m2 is heavier than m1 right so this time again the m1 will go up and m2 will go down in spite of having the fact that this time the weight of the pulley will be taken into consideration that is of mg but that mg is not going to uh, directly it's not going to uh, change the rate of change of displacement of m1 and m2 because the inextensible string connecting m1 and m2 uh, can have the same relation the distance that can be moved by m1 going upward the same distance m2 can go in the downward direction so then how how i will ensure that the heaviness of the pulley will impact on the value of acceleration here that will definitely make the change but the question arises how we will consider that change in our discussion that is the most interesting thing see this time it is fact that the heavy pulley cannot move along with the um, direction of motion of either m1 or m2 but this time the heaviness of the pulley will bring one difference what is it in the previous conditions i haven't uh, done the fvd if i do the fvd then it would be m1g going downward m2g is also downward and the light string must be having tension t on both side because the light pulley neither translate nor rotate and that is the reason why in case of a string on either side of the pulley we take equal tension right whenever there is a light pulley along with the light string as an arrangement but if it will be a heavy pulley with rough surface that means that means in this previous case if m2 was going downward m1 was going upward that means the string was moving on pulley surface like this string was moving on the pulley surface in a clockwise order then only this upward movement of motion of m1 along with the downward motion of m2 is uh, possible 
and that movement of the string over the pulley surface, smooth surface, will be assumed to be as if it is slipping, right? String will be assumed to be sliding or slipping over the surface of the smooth surface of the pulley. But now here, but now here again, being suggested M2 heavier than M1, definitely uh, it will go downward with an acceleration A, this will also go up because ultimately it is connected by a light inextensible string. So what will happen now? In this case, in this case, I can say the tension in the string on both sides will be different. Why I need to consider the tension on either side of the pulley as same string but different tension because this time I need to consider the rotation of the pulley because in this case also the downward motion of M2 along with the upward motion of M1 can only be possible when string moves over the pulley in clockwise order. And this time the movement of the string cannot be taken as a sliding over the pulley surface. Rather, this indicates that now, now pulley will be, now pulley will be rotating, pulley will be rotated, rotated clockwise. Now pulley will be rotated clockwise due to, due to, due to the net torque, due to the net torque or moment of force. Uh, do you understand what is torque or moment of force? Yeah, obviously because that much you haven't done till now, but still I am explaining it that is in short. Say, <clears throat> whenever a linear force can bring a turning effect on a rigid body, for example, for example, uh, in our home, in our house, uh, we do have uh, the doors, right? So, how do we open or close a door in our house or <coughs> uh, windows in our house? If it is not a sliding option, right, then while opening or closing the door, right, don't we rotate the entire <laughs> door surface? So, do we uh, approach any different way to rotate the door rather than either pushing the door or pulling the door, holding its one point, one specific point and suppose if this is if this is a door right if this is be the axis position if we suppose push this point cross is indicating inward effort when we push this way maintaining this distance r we are applying a linear force and as a result of this do we find the result that now the door is rotating this way right and when suppose this door will be pulled by a force outward force Right, then due to this distance, when we apply an outward force, does it rotate this way? So that means this linear force, that means here in this case, we are doing nothing other than applying linear force. So the linear force into the perpendicular distance is torque or moment of force. The primary object of the linear force is to give in the primary object of linear force is to provide acceleration to any object, isn't it? And that gives the linear motion to that object, either it is a point object or a dimensional body is concerned. But when a linear force, either pulling force or pushing effort, right, when that linear effort, instead of giving linear motion to a dimensional body, instead of giving linear motion, if the dimensional body gets a rotational effect, about some fixed axis available in a situation, then that linear force instead of providing linear motion is helping it to get a rotational motion. So whenever a linear motion can bring this effect, that effort of the linear force into the available perpendicular distance, perpendicular distance that should always be taken from axis. This will be considered to be an axis line about which the rotation will take place, right? So about an axis, the point where you are applying a force, the perpendicular distance, R is the perpendicular distance, isn't it? So linear force into perpendicular distance will be considered to be torque or moment of force, right? That brings, this is equal to, this is equal to I into alpha, like linear force is considered to be M into A, mass into linear acceleration. Similarly, this is called an angular force, torque or moment of force is an angular force. So that brings a result of angular acceleration alpha. Are you getting it? So where I will be the moment of inertia, I will be called moment of inertia.
and alpha will be angular acceleration. This all you will study in a chapter called rotational motion, right? That will come after a few more chapters. So here, this concept will be uh, repeated here because when we are saying that the roughness of the pulley will not allow the string to slip over its surface. So that means the this clockwise order of movement of the string will enforce the pulley to rotate as because pulley will not allow the sliding motion. So when one surface object uh, opposes the sliding motion of other uh, thing over uh, its surface, then it will bound to rotate it, right? So the clock, uh, the order of motion of the pulley will make it possible for the uh, pulley, which will be a geometry of a disc, that to rotate. So that's why here three, uh, this will rotate with an acceleration alpha because I have said that uh, resulting torque produces angular acceleration. So three equations will be written. One is for M1, that is T1 minus M1G is equal to M1A. Second one will be of M2, that is M2G minus T2, that is equal to M2A. And the third equation will be for pulley. Third equation will be for pulley. And why pulley is, will be experiencing this time T2 into R minus T1 into R is equal to I into alpha. Okay. So linear force, why I am writing it is this? Because if you see the FBD of the pulley separately, right, as I am taking, as I am taking the string passing over the pulley, string passing over the pulley is having tension this side as T2 and this side is T1 and this is being the center will be axis, right? So this side it is radius R, this side it is radius R. So about, this will be the axis position, are you able to understand it? So about axis, about axis this T2 into, this T2 into R, it is considered to be clockwise torque and T1 into, because these are the perpendicular distances, isn't it? So T1 into R will be giving the anti-clockwise torque. So being overall it is going clockwise with alpha, so net torque will be in favor of clockwise. So that's why I'm writing the clockwise order torque, which is according to geometry is provided by the tension T2 in the string, right? So T2 into R clockwise torque minus T1 into R is the anti-clockwise torque. So that will be the net torque is equal to I into alpha. Okay. And uh, there will be a relation between alpha and A, how you must be knowing one thing in uh, mathematics that is any arc length, any arc length that is written as the angle subtended by the arc into radius. So you can, we can write down S is equal to R theta, right? So if we differentiate it, can we write down ds by dt? Can it be written R into d theta by dt? So ds by dt is the rate of change of arc length. So rate of change of arc length can be written tangential velocity and rate of change of angular displacement can be written angular velocity. So we reach to one relation linear velocity is equal to angular velocity into radius, right? So if a body rotates with an angular speed omega, if a body rotates with an angular speed omega, then at every point it must be having tangential velocity. So this tangential velocity and angular velocity can be related with this form, right? And similarly, if you further differentiate it, dv by dt, that can be written r into d omega by dt. So this is equal to linear acceleration is equal to r into alpha. So linear acceleration in every circular motion will be tangential to the circle circular path, yes or no? So that means A is the tangential acceleration and that is related with the angular acceleration with this form. Therefore, as our objective was to get A and as in the geometry, as in this geometry, we can see the pulley is, this is the radius of the pulley, these are the radius then. As the pulley is rotating with angular acceleration alpha, corresponding to it, it's tangentially, it is the string going down. So the string going down with an acceleration A. So therefore, I can relate this A will be equal to alpha into R, right? So now we do have three equations. We do have three equations, one, two, and three. So in the third equation, what I can do, I can further write down A instead of alpha, can I write down it is small a by R? 
by this relation. So now, now if you add, I mean like uh, further this third equation can also be written something like T2 minus T1. This R you can do it the cross multiplication I into A by R square. This can be generalized as the fourth step of equation, isn't it? So now if you add three equations, now adding, adding 1, 2 and 4, the fourth step, right? If you add 1, 2 and 4, check it, 1, 2 and 4, what will happen? Right, exactly. So, LHS will become M2G minus M1G and RHS will be the A being taken common, it is M1 plus M2 plus I by R square. So, that means the value of acceleration is M2 minus M1 into G divided by M1 plus M2 plus I by R square, isn't it? 